Well, elsewhere, it's been a very volatile few days for the markets. The Dow down about 3.5% in this past week, bouncing back today up about 200 points. A lot of concerns remain for the market, though, including uh, worries over the domestic and global economies, Brexit, among many other things. Let's get some perspective now from Bob Diamond, the founding partner of Atlas Merchant Capital and former CEO of Barclays, of course. He joins now with our Leslie Picker. Leslie, it's all yours. Hey, Bill, thanks so much. And Bob, thank you for joining us, especially on this day where we're trying to make some sense of what to expect with Brexit, especially as it relates to the banks, which saw their shares, especially over in Europe, decline on the news of Theresa May's uh, deal that caused some resignations over there over Brexit. Now, what would a no deal mean for the banks over in Europe? Well, I think right now it's not a no deal as much as it's a soft Brexit. Uh, I think that um, most importantly, whether it's banks, whether it's the financial markets with the level of sterling, whether it's corporates in the UK, the one thing they want is certainty. Mm -hmm. And the one thing they got was uncertainty. And I think the read on this is that the, um, if this were to go through, uh, then the UK stays under the auspices of the European Union for an indefinite period. And I think it's that kind of uncertainty that we're seeing really impact the financial markets right now. How easy would it be for banks like Barclays, British banks, uh, to make their way to the mainland continent uh, in the case of Brexit and the need to do so? My, my operating assumption is that Brexit is going to go through. I don't think what happened overnight is, uh, is a Brexit or not Brexit. I think um, you know the UK voters have made a decision that it, it, the real question now is soft or hard. And the real question now is what level of uncertainty is there? Now, you're invested in uh, all across Europe, also yep. in Italian banks, which have come under some scrutiny lately. And uh, how difficult is it to invest over there with Italian and Greek banks? Um, how much of it is, is a moral hazard in that you feel some sort of comfort from the government that stepping in with a potential bailout if something goes wrong versus an actual opportunity to the upside for those assets? So we have 100% of a banking platform in Greece, and we're the largest investor in Corrado Passera's bank in, in Italy, and we're very comfortable in both. These are not large systemic banks. Uh, these don't fall under the category of too big to fail. But most importantly, these are platforms without legacy non-performing loans, without legacy technology. And if we're able to have lending platforms and deposit-taking platforms without legacy non-performing loans, um, with the technology necessary to take, um, you know, digital um, uh, uh, offerings, uh, then we're getting very, very strongly supported by the, the ECB and the regulators. Now, I want to get your thoughts on the regulatory environment here in the United States, because yesterday we saw Representative Maxine Waters, uh, her party, the Democrats, will now be in control of the House. She said that they do intend to uh, push forward with greater financial scrutiny uh, over the banking uh, services industry. Uh, Compare that with some news we saw from Berkshire Hathaway and many other hedge funds, um, which are actually investing uh, in the banking industry here in the United States. Um, do you see opportunity in this sector? Do you yep. see uh, the potential for greater regulatory risks? So I think the, the actions that were taken in light of the financial crisis 10 years ago from TARP, putting equity in the U.S. banks, forcing them to pass the Fed's stress test, um, really uh, advanced, um, I think, the U.S. banking industry relative to Europe um, much earlier uh, post-crisis. I think what we've seen in terms of regulatory rollback recently has not been addressing too big to fail or the systemic banks where the larger levels of capital supplemental leverage rules are still intact. But it's really being, uh, it's, re it, it's been reducing the complexity and the burden on small and medium enterprise uh, financial institutions. And I think it's been successful. Uh, I think it's been uh, necessary. And I think it's made uh, financial services in the U.S. more investable. So are you worried then that with the Democrats in control of the House, that those new protections and that the laxer regulatory environment would be taken away? I think a lot of the, the, the rollback of some of the unnecessary complexity for the smaller businesses has already been done. I think the Fed will continue in their role of rulemaking and, and rule writing. Um, but I think the U.S. is very strong. Uh, the financial services industry here is quite strong uh, relative to, to Europe.